Welcome back to Talking Sense. Um, as we've gone through the last couple of weeks, I've been talking with Katie Carruthers. She has this uh, tremendous story that she's been sharing on TikTok about the loss of her mom recently and all of the chaos, the emotions, the financial burdens, um, all that goes with that. And I'm so grateful, Katie, I've got you back one more time. Um, I won't I won't make you do this any longer. I know you've, you've got a lot that you're working through still. Um, you know, we were talking before this episode about how there's nothing you or I can do to prepare someone for the loss itself. Not really, not the emotional side. But uh, I think you share my view that if we can save someone some of the grief on the financial, psychological side in dealing with the steps that come afterward, it'd be totally worth it to me. Absolutely. Well, as I've said on the previous episodes, I have found myself just so mad at the world because death is so unfair. And when you want to just fall into your grief and deal with those emotions, you can't always do that if the business side of it is not set up before someone passes. And I have found myself so mad because so many of the things that I'm dealing with, that my brother's dealing with, they were preventable. And Mm -hmm. I do not blame my mom. As I've said, she was young. She passed unexpectedly. unexpectedly. We, We weren't prepared for this. But at the end of the day, death happens every day. You never know when it's coming for you. And so just the fact that so many of these things could have been prevented is one thing that just makes me really upset. And I don't want to do that to my loved ones in the future. Yes. And you mentioned that your mom was already dealing with the loss of her parents and trying to get through all that. And she had a wake up call and was in the process of getting her affairs in order. Um, And so I know that her heart was to protect you from this and it just didn't work out. And, and we're going to talk about trust and we're going to talk about estate planning today. But before we even get into that, there are steps that people can take, even without having that, just to save as much grief as they can. So if you say to yourself, OK, I can't afford to go do a trust, which, by the way, they're more cost effective than you think. But if you say to yourself, that's not where you're at, what you can do is add payable on death at your bank. You can add transfer on death to any investment accounts that you have, like with Schwab or wherever you're going for these things. I don't know where people go to do this themselves, but if you have accounts with us, we actually kind of make you do that. Um, But uh, if you're doing, you know, investing on your own, you can do that. Another thing you can do is make sure that your beneficiaries are up to date. We had a a situation a couple of years back where a husband had gone through a divorce, remarried, new wife had a similar name. And we realized two years into their marriage, the beneficiaries had never been updated. He moved his accounts here. Beneficiaries had never been updated. So first wife was still on all the accounts. Those are steps you can take reviewing those regularly to just make sure you're in order anyway. Uh, The things that tend to get missed are usually going to be like your employer plan, life insurance policies, um, you know, your personal accounts. So make sure you have those in place. But we are going to get into what estate planning is. And, And it's really the process of deciding what will happen to your possessions, money and responsibilities when you're no longer able to. I think some people forget about that responsibilities piece Mm -hmm. because that part's the heavy part. Right. So, you know, usually you're going to include a will, power of attorney, trust documents, maybe a medical directive. Um, But the goal is to make things easier for your family. And you were sharing when we first got together about how your grandparents actually had a trust, but it wasn't fully executed. Explain some of that for those that maybe don't know what that means. Yes. So what I have gathered, I'm still learning new information every day. So my mom was in the middle of probate with my grandparents' estate. She has two sisters. They were not the closest. So Mm -hmm. this has been a very long process. And, you know, everybody says, get a trust. If you have a trust, your kids won't have to go through probate. And so I asked my aunt not long ago, I said, why are y'all having to go through probate if they had a trust and she said because the estate wasn't because the trust wasn't fully funded there were so many assets that were not a part of the trust there are assets we're still finding out about now we're still trying to search that were just never written down and you know we don't have a crystal ball so it just resulted in so much stress so many just so much confusion Mm -hmm. that if thing if all those assets and all those information had been put in the trust we wouldn't be dealing with this in the first place and some people don't necessarily know what probate is either um, it's a legal case you start it you know you've got to get a lawyer most people use a lawyer i couldn't imagine having done it without a lawyer um, mm. because there's a lot but you're you're talking a six-month court case where it's public record 
anybody who wants to say that your mom owed them money can come forward and, and plead their case and you may be beholden to that, true or not. But part of it being public record is it's sitting in a county clerk's office and anybody who wants to come and look at those probate records can. And it's just insane to me to think that the the loss of privacy and mm-hmm. the lawyers aren't cheap because they know that these can drag on. You mentioned your mom's was your grandparents was going on two years when your mom passed away. You know, even right. though it's technically a six month process that assumes everybody gets along. Nobody argues. Nobody comes forward that has an issue. And right. there's a lot of administrative responsibilities that go with that. So that's yes. kind of the the quick probate. But what has been your experience with probate? Well, I had no idea what probate was until my mom passed. And even now, you know, you're, you are an expert in this kind of, I know nothing. I, and when we first talked, I wanted to make sure that was known. I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, talk to a lawyer. Yes. Take my advice about what I'm learning, but I'm simply sharing my experiences as I learn them. And I'm right in the middle of it. Um, but After we learned what probate was, we learned that my mom didn't have a trust. My brother really spearheaded finding us a lawyer, a good lawyer. And within about two weeks of my mom's death, we hired someone and started that six month clock, which, which runs out on my birthday. Uh, So happy birthday to me. But also what I just found out is I don't think we can technically close probate until we pay her taxes next year. Um, so still learning new stuff every day. Um, thankfully we are, we seem to have a really good lawyer. We are utilizing him as much as possible. Whenever Mm -hmm. I have a question or an issue, we're going to be paying him a lot of money. So I might as well get my money's worth and I'm reaching him all the time. Yes. And so interesting thing that you brought up there is you can close the court case, but you cannot close the estate until. So whoever's the administrator still is responsible for those taxes, even if they're for that. So yeah, you can't distribute everything until that, which is crazy. So what is a properly executed trust? So my husband and I have a trust. Um, What we have to do then is go to our bank and make sure that we have either the accounts owned by our trust, even though we run it right now, because we have what's called a revocable trust. And that's really what we're going to talk about today is revocable trust. I still retain control of all of my assets, but the trust can own them. So our vehicles need to be in the ownership of the trust. Our home needs to have what's called a beneficiary deed or be owned by the trust if I already own the whole thing. I still have a loan, so mine's got a beneficiary deed. Um, you know, my bank accounts need to either be payable on death or left to the trust. And there's some things you don't want left to the trust. Um, if you have IRAs, it can flow through the trust if you have the right kind, but there's some nuance there where you need to have a good lawyer. But if I have my trust documents, and I don't go put any of my assets owned by the trust or payable on death, beneficiarized to the trust, I just have a really good little paperweight full of stack. Like it's just a stack of papers. Uh, It has no actual value to my family. Right. Well, and what I've also learned in this process is I grew up and I don't know if it's a 90s kid thing or everyone, but I watched movies where people had their wills and maybe Mm, there's a yes with And as soon as you find the will, the day is saved because you see who's supposed to get what and everybody lives happily ever after. Um, The thing is, that is not real life. And so a lot of people commenting advice on my TikToks and so many people say, get a will, get a will, get a will. And I comment back and I say, no, get a trust. A will is tied to a trust. Wills are not what they are in the movies or maybe what they used Mm -hmm. to be. But I think people have that old school mindset of, Oh, if I just go and write a will, everything's easy and it's done. That is not true. You need a trust. Yes. And I think people, the way it was described to me by an estate planning attorney was the will is great for saying who gets grandma's China. Mm -hmm. That's about it. It is a ticket to probate and people don't realize that. And I, I hadn't even thought about that, but you're right. My whole life, I grew up watching these movies where if you could just find the will and that was our mindset with my mom. Was we just got to mm-hmm. find the will. We've got to find her most recent copy because she had redone it. None of us knew where it was. Even my dad mm-hmm. had no clue where it was. Um, and then when he passed away, he had done a handwritten will, but he didn't sign it and date it. Oh. He had signed and dated the envelope. So mm-hmm. thankfully, the judge would accept that. Oh, that's great. But it almost became a thing. <laughs> and right. then since he was my stepfather, he, again, not being legal heirs, mm-hmm. the will was moot. He had a niece who lives in another state who has a drug problem that technically was entitled to my parents' entire entire estate because she was his legal heir. 
Mm-hmm. Thankfully, nobody could find her. We did try because I was required to. Um, right. But it could have been even worse. And then since then, the property transition has been a nightmare. Mm-hmm. There's like right. literally one little property up at a lake. It's mm-hmm. nobody would say that this property is valued at anything, but we've been working on it for six years now. Right. So we've talked about kind of what it is, what it's not. And, you know, definitely that wills are not the same as a trust. What can you do, though? Because that's really why we're doing this is, you know, thinking about you on your journey. What do you feel like you want people to understand that they have the power to do now in anticipation of this coming up eventually? I would say, I mean, absolutely speak to an attorney. If you can't, if you can afford it, get a trust. As you said, they are well worth the cost, which I don't think they're that expensive, but mm-hmm. maybe that's just me. I think they are well worth. If my mom had known, and I'm sure she did, because like we talked about, she was in the process of getting a trust set up for us. Mm-hmm. Um, everything happened. But I think if she had known what would happen as the result of not having that trust set up sooner. She would have had a little more fire under her Mm -hmm. to go this taking care of, um, you know, things like life insurance. She was looking at that for years, shopping around for different ones. And as far as we have found, she didn't have one set up. So it's just, it's one of those things that you have to come to the reality side of things where death is going to happen. Your death, going to have it week. Nobody escapes this world without death and preparing the people that you love so that they are just allowed to grieve you because this kind of grief, especially the grief of a parent, the grief of a loved one, it is one of the worst things that you will go through. And so just to lighten the load anywhere that you can is a hundred percent worth it. And I think you're, what you said there kind of resonates with me too. If my dad had known the cost of probate, it was certainly less to have done a trust. Absolutely. And he would have done it. And it would have been overwhelming to him. I would have had to help him through that because he was one of those people that making those decisions, he felt so much gravity about every decision he made in his life right. um, that I think it would have been a little overwhelming. But what, what I found when I was doing it, it was much less heavy lifting on me than I expected. I expected mm-hmm. to have to go in there with a clear picture of everything and and know what I wanted. And what I found was I really just needed to know who mattered. Who did Mm -hmm. I want to make sure was taken care of in some way? What is their date of birth? What is their social security number? That's all I had to come to the table with. And then the attorney talked me through my options and helped me decide what to set up. And I have a blended family, so mine is complicated. I'm I'm not going to pretend it's not. But from a cost standpoint, it is absolutely worth it to me. And then once you're done with that, you're going to get a homework list. For the Mm -hmm. love of Pete, do it. Do the homework. <laughs> Don't just have a stack of papers that does nothing. Right. Um, and then whoever's going to be the executor needs a copy of it. Um, that's one mm-hmm. of the things we do for clients is if they have an estate plan, we do what's called a permission to disclose form. We keep a digital copy of it. We get a permission to disclose form for whoever the executor is that allows us to give them a copy. So if, mm-hmm. if you were my client, for instance, and you had given me a copy and you tell me who's supposed to get it, all they've got to do, all you've got to teach them is come see me. Yes. They don't have to chase 15 people. They come to me. I can give them that trust. I can say, okay, here's what you need to do and give them the steps to hopefully help them not be so overwhelmed. Absolutely. And I think a huge point of this is communication Mm -hmm. because you set all these things up and you don't tell your kids, you don't tell your spouse, you don't tell your loved ones. They have no way of knowing. So Mm -hmm. there were weeks that we were trying to figure out, did my mom actually have a trust? Did she have a will? Did she have life insurance? And I did enough research that I was able to figure out, okay, she most likely didn't, but there are people that their parents have set up those things and didn't tell them about it. You have to tell them, tell them where the important documents are. Make sure they have the copies. Communication is so important. Yes. So it's time for our final thoughts. And I'm going to give you some time because I think this is something that is so, I love hearing from you because you don't work in this world. And you're using this platform to help other people. So what would you say when it comes to trust that is your final thought for people to hear? Something that I hear all the time when I post a TikTok about getting your affairs in order and taking care of your loved ones are a lot of people my age, maybe a little bit older, that have tried to talk to their parents Mm -hmm. about these things. And the parents do not want to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about death. It's a downer. But 
it's something we can't get away from. And so I have people that tell me that they send my videos to their parents Mm -hmm. as kind of, this is what she is going through. Do you want this for me? And then I get comments a couple of weeks later saying my parents just got their trust set up. My parents just met her. And it's, it makes me feel so good to know that maybe there's just one less person that is going to have to go through this headache and this heartache. So please talk to the people that you love, talk to your kids, talk to your parents and know that this is an uncomfortable conversation. It's not fun, but not having this conversation can lead to so much heartache and Mm -hmm. we just want to prove that. So if you need to send people my TikToks to scare them straight, so be it. So, Katie, you mentioned your TikTok. I want to make sure people can find you. Can you help people uh, with how they're going to find you on TikTok to make sure they can share these maybe with somebody they need to pass them along to? Yes, absolutely. So my username is badwitch1126. <laughs> the same username I've had for years. It has become my personal brand. Um, but honestly, you could probably just go in the search bo- in the search bar and type grief and mm-hmm. find me. I make a lot of videos. It is a place of therapy for myself, for others. There's a lot of dry humor. So if you don't have a sense of humor, it's probably not the place for you. But I'm also really trying to help others as well as myself. Well, one of the things I say about grief or loss in general is you don't want to waste it. So thank you for not wasting yours. And thank you guys for joining us today on Talking Sense. I hope this content's been helpful for you. And I look forward to catching you next week. Thanks for listening to Talking Sense. And if you like what you hear, make sure and subscribe to the podcast to get all the newest episodes. The Gym Wealth team is available to you 24-7 at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or by calling our offices at 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. And while we like to have fun here, we're also financial advisors, and that means disclosures. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment and no strategy can assure success. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Independent Advisor Alliance. Independent Advisor Alliance and Gemwell Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. 